Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Tigers franchise mode here in MLB The Show 21. So in last episode we made a few trades to help out our bullpen a little bit and get our pitching a little bit better. Um, it still didn't improve that much but uh, we did have a really good season uh, finishing second best in the entire league with over 98 wins or well 98 wins on the season. So we finished just behind the Dodgers but we are going to be taking on the Oakland Athletic in the ALDS and hopefully we could uh, have a good run and knock them out and get back to the ALCS because this year the Toronto Blue Jays did not make the playoffs which is a team we've ran into the last few years and they've knocked us out so this year if we beat Oakland we would be facing either Texas or Tampa Bay so regardless hopefully we could uh, win the series and go on to the ALCS and hopefully we can get to a World Series in the next few episodes to end off the series that'd be pretty awesome so anyways before we actually get into this playoff matchup let's take a look again at the roster for the Oakland Athletics so you guys can know what we're going up against again. But it pretty much looks similar to what it was, I believe, when we played them last. Uh, so they have Todd Hackett, they have Gavin Lux, they have Rob Morrow, Luis Robert, Riley Green, and Vern Mathis. Former player of ours, Chad Hirsch, former draft pick of ours, actually, too. Uh, he left us a few years ago. He actually had some pretty solid seasons with Oakland so far. But yeah, hopefully we could beat them. And then also they have Joe Rizzo and Xavier Edwards. Benchwise, Sam Brown... Aramis Adamon, Ray Carur, or yeah, Kirur, I don't even know where it's pronounced, Carur, I don't know, Bryce Turing, and then John Lou, uh, Lowe, not Lou, what the heck am I saying, John Lowe, so pretty good in terms of pit, uh, batting and stuff like that, like their contact hitting looks like it's pretty good, uh, they don't really have a whole lot of power players in their lineup, I don't think, like their best right here, almost Fern Mathis is one of them, they do have Luis Robert, who's obviously pretty good, uh, and then I guess like the top of their lineup is pretty solid like Rob Morrow and stuff like that So that is their batting order then in terms of their pitching rotation. It's pretty much the same thing I believe that we faced before uh, they have Alberto Casilla. They have Jared Irizarry Mariano Caraballo Eddie Cabrera and Alex Barreto So yeah, I think it's pretty much stayed the same since we played them a few years ago because last year I believe we played yeah, it was Baltimore. We played in terms of the uh, ALDS so I think it was like two or so years ago that we played Oakland when we actually still might have had Chad Hirsch or something. So, anyways, let's get into this ALDS and see if we can knock them out. Hopefully we can, cause or else this would end up being the final episode. Well, let's actually make sure our roster is good to go for this playoff matchup before we actually get into it. So, Chauncey, David Jordan, Tucker, McGrath, and James, I think that is good to go. And then bullpen-wise, Sierra Fuentes, who we brought in via trade. Mayer, Miller, Chavez, Ramirez, and Corona. That looks good to me. And then in terms of our lineup, let's make sure this is set up good. Looks good to me, I think, too. Pierre Montenegro has obviously been pretty solid for this team. Garcia, Sullivan in the lineup instead of Gary Hara. Interesting. Does Gary Hara get thrown into the lineup at all in terms of anything? Yeah, he does against uh, left-handed pitchers, but uh, against right-handed, he's off the bench, which is kind of interesting, but I think it makes sense. And then rookie Troy Hinton, who has yet to play a game yet, but he was called up, is also on the bench. Brick Plummer, Michael Bland. Yeah, we have a really filthy team in terms of overall ratings. And then in terms of like contact and stuff like that, we should be a good enough team to beat this uh, Oakland Athletics team, I'm hoping. So that is all situated and good to go. Let's get to our first playoff game of the year on home field against the Oakland A's and see if we could uh, knock them out like we did a few years ago. We should be able to as long as our pitching holds up, which it probably should, considering we had a lot of good pitching actually this year. I think it was just kind of like our ERA wasn't that good, but we still outscored our problems usually. So let's go to simulate game. I'm not actually, oh, I didn't want to go simulate game. Oops. I wanted to go play a game. I haven't done this in a while, so I accidentally simulated the game via the calendar sim. We win 4-2, to two, though, so we will take a look at uh, the box score, because why not? But, uh, yeah, next game we'll actually do uh, the real-time simulation stuff, but uh, we do win that game 4-2, to two, which is good. Good pitching performance, it looks like, from Chauncey, so that is good to see that we won that game. Let's simulate through date and get on to game number two. And we will go play game this time. And yeah, that's good. And we will go to quick manage. 
for some reason I forgot about how to get to quick manage and whatnot, but oh well. At least we won our first game and didn't lose it, or else I, or else I would have felt bad. But here we go, game number two at the Comerica Park. Let's see if we could take ourselves a 2-0 series lead here. David Jordan's going to start this game. And the batting order is going to be Luis, Gar or not Luis Garcia, Gary Harris starting us off. So, yeah, we're going against left-handed pitcher Jared Irizarry for this game. So let's advance and let's get through this. So we're going to just pitch through a first few innings with David Jordan because David Jordan usually could go pretty deep into games, I think. Let's see what happens. And actually, let's just go pitch by inning instead. There you go. There you go. Scoreless after that. We don't get anything there, but we got two hits, which is good. Let's just go through this a little bit quickly to start off with until David Jordan starts to get a little tired, which he kind of already is, which is kind of surprising. There we go. We go up one nothing. I don't know who brought that one in, but uh, we are up one nothing. We have five hits already, too, which is pretty good. And, yeah, I think we'll probably go another two or three innings with David Jordan, depending on if he could uh, limit the amount of pitches he has to throw, which is good. He's doing good so far with the shutout. We're still up one nothing, but we do have six hits, so we kind of need to score a little bit more. Hopefully, with the amount of hits we're getting, hopefully we can score some. Another inning for David Jordan, and he has another good inning. Let's go. Six inning for us. We score three runs, and we're up four to nothing. Let's go. Eight hits as well for the team. This is looking pretty good so far. That we might go up two nothing in the series. David Jordan is getting a little bit tired, but he has nine strikeouts through six innings. We will give him one more inning, I think. And he's going to keep it uh, scoreless. Let's go for the Oakland A's. Um, yeah, let's keep on going. And now we're up 5 to nothing. We get a run scored. We're up 5 nothing. 10 hits to 2. And I think we should probably take Jordan out. But he he's still not fully tired yet. He's got 10 strikeouts in this game. Let's do one more inning. And he's going to give up a run, of course. I probably should have taken him out, but whatever. It's 5 to 1. We still got a 4 run lead, which is pretty good. Top of the 8th for us, we don't score anything, and we are going to make a pitching change, and we will bring out, uh, might as well bring out Steven Fuentes to try and close out this game, because I don't think we need to bring out Corona yet. Yeah, I'm going to bring out Fuentes to try and close this game out. He pitch, and he walks him, that's not good. Come on, Fuentes. Pitch again, fielder's choice, that's good to see. Another pitch, and they score a run. Yikes, Chad Hirsch gets a run scored in the ninth to make it 5-2. to two. Oh, uh, come on, Fuentes. You got to get us out of this, man. Pitch, and they score another run. Oh, no. Okay, we are just going to... Uh, hmm. We're going to take Fuentes out. He's been terrible so far. Yeah, he's been terrible. We're going to take him out and get Corona in because maybe we should have just put Corona in. He's going to pitch and fly out and another pitch and strike out, and we're going to win 5-3. to three. Almost a little bit of a scare there from Fuentes, but we do win 5-3. to three. And David Jordan with a phenomenal game, pitching eight innings with 12 strikeouts and five hits, uh, or five hits allowed, one run allowed, a earned run, I think that is, and in two base on balls. So he barely walked anybody, and he struck, struck out a lot of players too. Very good game from David Jordan, exactly what we need from our pitching rotation. So we head to game number three in Oakland now, looking to close out the series and get into the ALCS again. Tampa Bay is up 2-0 on Texas right now, which is kind of a surprise to me, considering Texas had like 97 wins, but we had 98, so that's kind of a surprise. Also, the Dodgers were knocked out in three games, which is a huge surprise, because the Dodgers, like I said, finished with over 100 wins, and they were the best team in the league but they are knocked out by the San Diego Padres, who will face the Pittsburgh Pirates. So I think this might be our year to have a chance to actually win this if we get uh, beat Tampa Bay next round, if we get to face Tampa Bay. Because if San Diego can knock out the Dodgers, then that means pretty much the NL is not as strong as it was, or as the AL is currently. And if we can knock out Tampa Bay, then maybe this is our year to win it. That would be pretty awesome if it could be. But anyways, we still have a series to go. Let's see if we could knock out Oakland here in Game 3 on their home field. I believe last time we played them, they survived their first game on home field. But I'm not 100% sure with that. Dennis Tucker is going to start this game in Oakland. And we will go to Quick Manage and see if we can knock him out. Hopefully we can. That's good. 
and yeah that's good to go as well and yep that's good too well, let's get into this game and see if Dennis Tucker can get the win here on the road let's go through the first few innings they get a hit in the first inning which is a bit scary but at least nothing has been scored yet so far we get a hit of our own they score three runs in the bottom of the second that's not good Dennis Tucker's off to a little bit of a slow start this game but hopefully he can kind of rebound from that or else we're gonna have to probably replace him a little bit early maybe like in the fifth inning or so I guess Top of the third for us, we get one run back. That's good to see that we're actually scoring some runs back. Let's see what happens in the bottom of the third. No runs scored. Good stuff, Dennis. Top of the fourth, we get another four runs. Wow, we are now up 5-3. to three. So the game has flip-flopped. They are up 3 nothing, but we're now up 5-3 to three going into the bottom of the fourth. Another inning for Dennis Tucker, and he plays solid again. It is still 5-3. to three. Top of the fifth for us, we don't score anything. We will keep Dennis Tucker in because he's already got eight strikeouts despite in the, having a bit of a high ERA and stuff like that right now. But eight strikeouts in four innings is kind of outrageous. Bottom of the fifth now, they don't score anything. Their guy is tired. Let's see if we can take advantage of that. No, we can't, but we're still up five to three. Tucker's still got ten strikeouts through five innings, so he's averaging two strikeouts in an inning, which is outrageous right now bottom of the sixth and he's gonna give up some hits but we are still up five to three we might take him out next inning top of the seventh for us and we're not gonna score anything Dennis Tucker is getting a little bit tired I am gonna make a pitching change already and I think we will bring out Ray Sierra yeah we're gonna bring out Ray Sierra see if he could uh, help us uh, hold on to this lead Ray Sierra in the bottom of the 7th is going to give up one run, which is not great, but we are still up 5-4 to four going into the top of the 8th. Let's see if our offense can add to this lead. No, they can't, but we are still up by 1. Sierra is going to stay in, even though he just had a pretty bad 7th inning. Let's see what happens, and he gives up 2 runs, and now the Oakland A's have the lead back. Sierra has like, really struggled, it seems like, out of the bullpen. Which is not good. We're going into the top of the ninth. We need to score a run or else we're going to end up losing this game. So Bronson Bonner is up to bat. He is 1 for 3 tonight. Do we want to bring in Saposto? Hmm. Let me just take a look at Saposto. Saposto against the left-handed pitchers is this guy? I think this guy's a left-handed pitcher. I should take a look at that quickly to see if he's a left-handed pitcher. Um, Oakland, bullpen. Can I look at their starting pitcher currently? Thad Ward. Does it say him in there? Oakland bench. Lineup. Where does it say his pitching stuff? Hmm. Oh, wait, I can look at him right there. Um, he is a right-handed pitcher. So, we got to take a look at pinch hitting again. Uh, Saposto, is he good against right-handed pitchers? Power is a 53. His contact is a 58. It's not as good as the left-handed pitchers, so I don't think we should probably make this change because I think Bronson Bonner is probably better. So Bronson Bonner up to bat. They are going to make a pitching change to Victor Vodnik now, so we got to take a look at him. He is also a right-handed pitcher. Okay, so a swing from Bronson Bonner. He strikes out. That's not good. Their closer is in, and then Pierre Montenegro up to bat. He's 2 for 4 tonight. He swings, he strikes out. Oh, man, they're going to win this game. Which I like. I, I didn't really I think that we were going to sweep them, though, but Luis Garcia is our last hope to keep us alive in this game. A swing and a fly out, and we're going to lose 6 to 5. And Joe Rizzo is going to be the player of the game, going 2 for 3 with 2 runs, 2 home runs, and 4 RBIs. So we're going to lose game number three, but we do still have a 2-1 series lead. Hopefully we can knock them out next game as Matthew McGrath will start his first ever playoff game, which is kind of scary. This is where I wish our our uh, like pitching rotation was a little bit stronger than the years past, like uh, with Casey Mize and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think Matthew McGrath should be good. He had a pretty solid regular season, so hopefully he could do good in the playoffs. Texas is now won a game, so Tampa Bay still looking to end that series off. Not like the NL where both series is ending in the sweep, I think. Let's see if we could uh, take a three or win the series in four games, and hopefully we don't go to a game five situation because I don't want that really. 
So let's go to play game. Quick manage. We're on the road still. Let's see if we can knock out the A's with Matthew McGrath. And yeah, that's good to go, I think. Yeah, that's good. Okay, perfect. Let's get through this for the first two innings, see what happens. We are going to score two runs in the first inning, so that's a good start for our offense. Four hits as well. And they're going to get nothing. That's good to see. Our offense off to a good start. They get two hits, but they don't score anything. We'll keep McGrath in for now. He does give up a run there. And, uh, yeah, it's a 2-1 game. Five hits to three. Don't know how long McGrath is going to go into this game, to be honest, but... We'll see. Yeah, because he's already getting a little bit tired. So I'll probably end up having to replace him in like the 6th, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he's given up a decent amount of hits. He's not having the greatest out outing so far, even though we're up 2-1. to one. Hey, we go up 3-1 to one now. That's good insurance. I think I am going to take McGrath out already. Or maybe not already. Maybe after this next inning. Yeah, after this next inning. He doesn't give up anything, which is good. Top of the six for us, and we get two more runs. We're now five to one, and McGrath is going to be taken out in the sixth inning. And we will bring out James Mayer. James Mayer is our starter for next, or as a starter, kind of though. I could bring out Eric Miller. Yeah, let's bring out Eric Miller. Why not? Eric Miller, let's win this game, buddy. He plays good that first inning with him in the lineup. Okay, there we go. We're up 7-1. to one. We should be able to close this one out now. Our offense is good. Defense has been pretty solid so far. Still up 7-1 to one going into the top of the 8th. We have 14 hits in this game too. And Eric Miller is playing really good out of the bullpen so far. So, Still up 7-1 to one going into the top of the ninth. We are going to go through this quickly. We're still up 7-1 to one going into the bottom of the ninth now. And I am going to take out Eric Miller, and we are going to bring in our closer in Diego Corona to close out this series, hopefully. He's going to pitch. He bets uh, Chad Hirsch on a single. That's not good. Uh, let's see if we can get a double uh, double play, which means I should probably pitch to contact, right? I don't know if I should. Let's pitch to contact, and he walks him. Two men are on base. That's not good. Come on, Corona. Don't blow this, man. A pitch and a sack bunt. Bunts the guys over, but that is one out. They're down to two outs. Let's pitch again. They do score one run, which is not a surprise. Let's pitch again, and they do get a sack fly. They get two runs scored, but it's still a 7-3 game, and they only have one out left. Diego Crone is going to pitch, and oh my god, he's blowing it. He's blowing it. He gives up a two-run home run. Jeez. Crone is making this a really bad game right now. I should probably get him out of there, to be honest, because his confidence is probably not good. We're up 7-5 to five in the ninth, and there's still one out. Don't blow a 7-1 lead, please. A pitch from Corona. He flies him out, and we're going to win a kind of a close game near the end of it. But we are going to be taking on the Tampa Bay Rays or the New York Rangers. Or not New York Rangers. What the heck am I saying? The Texas Rangers in the ALCS. Oh, thank God. That was close. Cameron Meisner, the player of the game, going 3-5. for five, Two runs, a home run, and a, also two RBIs. But... We almost blew that game in the uh, final inning. Not a good game from uh, Diego Corona in that sense, but at least we win the series, and we're going to be either facing Texas or uh, Tampa Bay. So let's take a look at our player stats before we take a look at who we're going to be facing. It is going to a Game 5 situation over there, so Texas might come back from down 0-2. But uh, Chauncey was really good in that first game. David Jordan was a fantastic player in his first game. Uh, Tucker was solid, but he kind of struggled a little bit. James didn't play. McGrath was actually okay, I would say. And then bullpen-wise, we kind of struggled in terms of our bullpen. Like, Fuentes was not good. And then, like, Corona really struggled that last game. Chavez and Ramirez didn't play at all. Batting-wise, looks like Bonner didn't have a good first round. Vargas was really good. Valdez is down there in triple A for some reason. Why did Valdez get sent down? We need Valdez in the lineup. Hmm. Now I want Valdez in the lineup. He was... Hmm. I don't know why he got sent down. The AI is pretty annoying when they send people down randomly. I should probably call him up, though. Which means I would have to send uh, back down to Troy Hinton. Which I think I'm okay with. Let's remove him from our playoff roster. 
Um, be fortunate, he must, number of placement must be added. Okay, so we got to add uh, Valdez back to our playoff roster because he should be on our playoff roster because he needs to be on a team that could potentially uh, go far this year. And we will remove Hinton because Hinton could be down there at AAA. But uh, yeah, anyways, there was that. Cortez was really good in the first round. Nunez was really good. Sullivan was really good. Garcia kind of struggled. Uh, Gary Hare was pretty solid. Harvey was really good. Cameron Meisner was really good. Rick Plummer didn't even play. Uh, Michael Bland was really good as well. And uh, Pierre Montenegro was really good. So our batting was phenomenal throughout that first round. Which is great to see. Now let's see what uh, who we're going to be facing. Hopefully it's Tampa Bay though. I would rather face Tampa I think. And it's going to be Texas. So Texas comes back from an 3 deficit or 2 deficit to win in 5 games. Which means they're on a three-game winning streak going into the series, which is pretty scary. But we're going to be facing them. The winner of them will face either Pittsburgh or San Diego in the World Series. But let's take a look at what the roster looks like, and then that'll be pretty much it for this episode. But yeah, hopefully it's a team we could beat. Because they did have a pretty similar record to us during the regular season. So they could end up like Toronto and knock us out. So here is their uh, pitching rotation, which is pretty filthy in terms of overall ratings. It looks like some of the guys had a rough time, though. They have Walter Taguchi, who's a 92. Marcos Mora, who's a 91. I believe this guy was like a first overall pick in one of the first-year drafts we had, if I'm not mistaken. They have Claudio Casto, who's really good. Ronan Capola. And they also have Willie Bautista. But uh, that's 490 overall pitchers, which is pretty gross. And in bullpen-wise, they have Alexis Sanchez, Andy Cruz... Jacob Gomez, Elvis Dodson, Tim Cabrera, Phil Red, who I believe yeah, was also a high up pick in one of the first year drafts, and Yuzniel Calderon. So, pitching wise, they're a good team. Now, I would assume their lineup is a little bit weaker, but I could be wrong with that. Maybe they're just all around a built up team. So, where are you, Texas? There you are. So, they have Khalil Lee, Lazaro Amateros, Richard Cobb. Gabriel Arias, Jeremy De La Rosa. Oh my god, this team is gross. Yo, we're in for like a really tough time. Oliver Webb, 85. Nolan Oliger, 81. Lawrence Goto, 91. And Anthony Shepard. They're, in terms of their right handed uh, lineup, they have nobody that's below an 84 overall. Now, in terms of their actual like statistics, they have some good contact hitters and power hitters as well. And in bench-wise, they have even some good players like Shirt and Apostle, Nick Schnell, Sully Matias, Salvatore Estrada, and Samuel Reyes. Yeah, so their worst overall player on their team is a 77, then it's an 80, and then after that, it's an 83 overall. This is a really filthy team in Texas. Like, it must have just, like, because I don't think they did it that well last year. But, uh, yeah, this is a very scary team. And I can see why they won almost as much games as us. Like, it's going to be probably a tough matchup. Let's take a look at the standings just to see how they did by comparison to us. So, yeah, they finished with one less win than us. 45-31 uh, and 31 against the division. So, they're better against the division than us. We had a better home record, and they had a better road record. They also had a better day record than us. We had a better night record. Hmm. And they're 5th in contact, 2nd in power, 2nd in pitching, 4th in defense, and 10th in speed. Yeah, that team's going to win the World Series, I think. They're probably going to end up knocking us out. Because right now, they're better than us in pretty much every single category, except for contact hitting. At least that's the way it looks like. And currently, their fielding percentage is at 100%. Their ERA is a little bit higher than ours. We're better on base percentage and slugging percentage-wise. And we also got better batting average. So we might end up being able to beat them if our offense continues to play good. But other than that, it's going to be very tough to beat them, I think and get on to our first World Series and stuff like that. So, Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Tigers franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the ALCS against the Texas Rangers as we look to make it to our first ever World Series. And hopefully we could do so because, like I said, if that doesn't happen tomorrow, or not tomorrow's episode, but next episode is going to be the final episode, which would not be good. So let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys next time.